So we've been talking about uh, how rocks fail, and so today we're going to get into the first application of what we've learned about how rocks fail, and that is uh, the compressive and tensile failure in vertical wells. And so we'll start with vertical wells because they're simpler, actually, but then we'll extend this to deviated wells, which will include horizontal wells. So um, really, uh, for deviated wells, it, all of the same concepts apply for vertical wells. We just have to do one of those, you know, your favorite rotations. Uh, we have to do a rotation into the well bore uh, of the equations. But other than that, er everything is, you know, the equations and the theory for uh, the stability of the well bore will be the same. It just involves a rotation for deviated wells. So we'll get into that soon. Today we're just going to talk about vertical wells. Vertical wells are nice because, you know, the vertical stress is always down the middle of the well bore, essentially. And so we really have to only concern ourselves with the um, two horizontal stresses. So there's a classic solution um, for stress around a circular cavity. It was originally given by uh, a guy, Kirsch. <coughs> Kirsch. In like 1898, and in fact, the the figure that's that's drawn here is from the original paper in 1898, and I I was was sort of impressed with his artistic ability because that's a you know obviously he didn't draw that with a computer he drew that by hand in 1898 and kind of went pretty pretty nice drawing. Uh, so of course this is a solution for the stress around a circular cavity with some far field stresses, and those are given at infinity, essentially, so truly far field. And uh, we're not going to go through the derivation of those, because it would probably take about three or four classes just to do that by itself. Uh, if you are interested in seeing the derivation, it's given in, I think, the second reference on the syllabus. There's a book, uh, The Fundamentals of Rock Me Mechanics by R Jaeger. Um, the, the derivation is in that book, if you really care uh, to see it. So there they are in all their glory. Now this is not quite the original version developed by Kirsch. Uh, it's very, very close to it, but the, these include the effects of pore pressure. Okay, so this is really for a poroelastic type formulation. And now we've moved into polar coordinates, so our, um, our stress tensor now, our stress tensor is in polar coordinates, so we have like sigma theta theta, sigma theta r, sigma theta z, Sigma R R, Sigma R Z, and Sigma Z Z. And then of course it's symmetric. Um, so there are all the components, I guess, except for the Sigma Theta Z component, which is uh, actually, um, yeah, so except for the Sigma Theta Z component, which will be zero uh, in this case in polar coordinates. So uh, so we have, also just keep in mind that I'm trying to be consistent. Whenever I use the sigma, I'm talking about the effective stress. So here we're talking about the, the true stress S or the stress tensor S minus the pore pressure as I am. Or in, in this case, they're given in terms of the SH max and SH min, so it would just be SH max minus the pore pressure. SH min minus the pore pressure. All right. So we also have some, some terms there are. So here's our circular well bore. Uh, R is going to be the distance from the center of the well bore. Okay. So our coordinates start at the center. So R is the distance from the center of the well bore. Theta is this angle as measured from SH max, okay? 
and A then is the radius of the wellbore. Right. So at the point A over R is equal to 1, that's right at the wellbore wall. Okay. So we'll be using those equations. Uh, notice that both sigma RR and sigma theta theta have this term in it, which I'll call delta P later. So this is the pressure at the wellbore wall, which is essentially, in, in a practical application, that's going to be the, the mud weight, right? If we're, we're drilling, in a, in a drilling scenario, that'll be the mud weight. So that's the mud weight or the pressure at the wellbore wall um, minus the pore pressure. So that will, you'll see it later as delta P. And just keep in mind that both sigma RR and sigma theta theta have that in there. So here's an example of uh, just plugging numbers in and then plotting for an array of R's. So basically, you know, each of those colors or pixels on the screen represent a point-wise evaluation of those equations, right? And uh, you can see there. So just given what, uh, also notice that th in this case, delta P is zero, right? So the, the pore pressure and the mud weight are equivalent. So there's no, the delta P is zero. Uh, so for given these, uh, of course, sigma vertical, or the SV doesn't even matter in this case. Um, so given those equations, uh, what can you observe about this already? So this is the maximum hoop stress, right? So this is the maximum hoop stress. I don't remember if we, I think we talked about this in one slide, but in terms of, in terms of your, your principal stresses, So this is the maximum normal, maximum shear. Sigma theta theta would be there, and sigma RR would be there. Sigma ZZ would be the, min the intermediate. So for all, in this case, sigma RR corresponds to, if we go back a slide, Well, I'm going to hold off on the point I was going to make. It, it's coming up. Um, sorry. OK. So I guess at this moment, you just have to take my word for it that uh, right at the wellbore wall, sigma RR corresponds to delta P. Right? So it's just, the, it's just, the, it's just this the difference in this, and that's zero in this case, okay? So really, sigma RR is, is going to be zero, essentially. So that's, that's the point zero in the sigma. So in that, in that scenario, if we looked at a failure model, you know, a more, fail, more type failure model, it's really only going to be controlled by sigma theta theta, okay? And so this plot is of sigma theta theta. So in other words, what I'm saying here is at least at the wellbore wall, where sigma RR is approximately zero in this case, or is zero in this case, then whether it's going to fail, the size of the Mohr circle is only controlled by sigma theta theta. Therefore, it's useful to plot sigma theta theta here to determine essentially where it's going to fail. So the highest hoop stress is going to control, you know, this is where the wellbore would fail if it's going to fail. So given that blue colors or cold colors are low values and red colors are high values, and looking at that figure in terms of the relationship to SH min and SH max, if this wellbore were going to fail, and I'm not saying it is, 
because we don't have a failure model associated. We don't know what kind of rock it is, right? If it were going to fail, however, where would it occur? Well, that, in terms of its relationship to SH min and SH max. SH min, okay? Th that's the point I wanted to make. This is always consistent with breakouts. Breakouts will always occur sort of at the azimuth of SH min. Okay. I can guarantee you'll have a question, it, one of those multiple choice te test questions that'll ask you that. So remember that, okay? It's, it's important. 